Thank you for having me here today to talk about stimulation of estrus and ovulation in lactating sows. Once again, this is Hyatt Frobos, PhD candidate at Kansas State University, uh, going over the presentation from the 2014 Midwest meetings. Before getting into the details of this particular study, I'd like to start with a background on why sows traditionally experience a period of anestrus during lactation. And while there are many factors involved, several of the primary reasons that influence the sow's ability to return to estrus include her metabolic status, whether she's in a positive or negative energy balance, the presence of the suckling litter and the negative feedback mechanisms of that, sow, that litter suckling on the sow and keeping her out of estrus, and finally, the absence of a boar in the typical farrowing crate environment. Together, these factors ultimately result in the failure of ovarian follicles to develop to preovulatory size. Because of these factors, any successful lactational estrus stimulation strategy needs to offset each of these issues. Now, despite these issues, researchers have been interested in investigating methods to induce estrus in lactating sows dating back to the 1950s. However, the general consensus of this research has been that the methods used have been too labor-intensive and the sow responses to lactational estrus too inconsistent in order to merit widespread industry adoption. But nevertheless, the idea of uncoupling weaning from rebreeding offers several potential benefits. Those include reduced sow non-productive days, potential to increase the age of the weaned pig, possibility of easing transition into group gestation housing, and the potential to shift employee duties from breeding into farrowing with a potential reduction in pre-weaning mortality with that association. And recently, there has been renewed interest in this research area in Australia, as noted by Downing and others and Terry and others, as well as in the Netherlands, where they have actually achieved levels of lactational estrus comparable to sows which were weaned conventionally and mated post-weaning. However, those levels still haven't reached the type of consistency and high response rate seen in high-producing U.S. sow herds. Therefore, the objectives of this study were to determine the effect of combining altered suckling and boar exposure on the incidence of estrus during lactation in sows, and a secondary objective was to compare the estrus response between primiparous and multiparous sows. For the procedures of this study, we used 53 PIC 1050 sows over two farrowing groups, which farrowed between the months of October and December 2012. Parity of these sows ranged from 1 to 5, averaging 2.6, and litter size was standardized within 48 hours of farrowing, but the average suckle litter size of 11.6 pigs. We used the day on which most of the litters were born as day zero, and sows were fed ad libitum throughout lactation, a common diet typically used in lactation programs. To remove the, any effect that lighting would have on cyclicity, we left the lights on 24 hours per day throughout the lactation period as well as the subsequent gestation period. For the treatments of this study, on day 18 of, of the trial, we allotted sows to one of two treatments within parity group, which were denoted as primiparous or multiparous, from hereafter denoted as prim or malt, and these were equalized approximately for suckle litter size, date of farrowing, and a sow's body weight. There were a total of 25 control sows, which were handled as would be the farm's normal practice, continuously suckling their litters until weaning on day 21. We also had an altered suckling treatment of 28 sows, hereafter denoted as alt, and for a visual representation of the alt treatment, I think uh, an animation is the best way to describe this rather complex treatment. Once again, on day 18, we allotted sows to one of two treatments. For the alt sows, the heaviest pigs on the litter, uh, of the litter were weaned, split weaned into the nursery at day 18, whereas the five lightest weight pigs on each of these sows remained on the sow. Sows in the alt treatment were then paired next to each other in the farrowing crate, and their lightweight pigs were combined to form a new lightweight litter of 10 pigs. That lightweight litter was then alternated between sows at 12-hour intervals so that the piglets still received 24 hours per day of suckling access. However, the sow received that reduction in the suckling stimulus, previously mentioned as a negative feedback on lactational estrus, so that we may be able to see an estrus response without hurting piglet performance. This, con this continued until weaning of these pigs on day 25 of lactation. And additionally, sows were removed from their farrowing crate 
and taken to an external pen environment where they were provided 15 minutes of bore exposure via both nose-to-nose -nose and full bore contact. Furthermore, estrus was confirmed in these sows using a back pressure test in the presence of a bore, and sows were artificially inseminated at first observed estrus and once again 24 hours later. I also performed transrectal ultrasound on these sows using an Aloka 500V ultrasound with a 5.0 MHz, 5 megahertz probe. This was performed daily from day 17 until ovulation. Ovulation was determined as the time once large preovulatory size follicles were observed, then ovulation was confirmed by the subsequent scan when less than four large follicles were present across the two ovaries. As you can see at the bottom of the slide, this would be a picture of the ultrasound probe used in the study. And here are some pictures shown by the ultrasound image of both small to medium follicles, as well as large preovulatory follicles, which were recorded daily. Furthermore, serum estradiol was measured at day 18, day 21, and day 25 via jugular venipuncture in order to compare the follicular growth patterns observed via ultrasound. Pregnancy was confirmed in all sows from day 28 after insemination. Although priority 5 sows were culled once pregnancy diagnosis was confirmed, the subsequent farrowing performance was collected for all remaining sows, totaling 40 of the original 53. For statistical analysis, all normally distributed data were analyzed using the mixed procedure of SAS, with sow used as the experimental unit and farrowing group included in the, in the model as a random effect. However, pregnancy and farrowing rate were evaluated using a chi-square analysis using PROC logistic in SAS. And we set our significance and tendencies at P less than 0.05 and P less than 0.10 respectively. Moving into the results of this study, I'll start with sow performance and particularly like to focus on the table at the top as you can see in this and future slides controls will be denoted on the left and alts on the right and once again primiparis and multiparis broken down within each of those treatments for lactation body weight loss you can see that primiparis sows as would be expected lost a greater percentage of their body weight compared to multiparis sows and this might have also been driven by the fact that they consumed less feed intake during the course of the lactation but if we look at alt versus control sows, you can see there was no difference in lactation body weight loss. There was no difference in back fat, back fat loss, but they did consume a greater amount of feed, which might be attributed to the fact that they nursed for an additional four days, once again being weaned at 25 days compared to day 21. For piglet growth performance, a particularly interesting finding of this study was that we didn't hurt growth performance of the pigs. As you can see at day 18, there were no differences across treatments within either parity group or across treatments. And at day 25, there still remain no differences across treatments despite the implementation of the ALT treatment, so rotationally suckling those lightweight pigs and once again split weaning the heavyweight pigs earlier compared to their count control counterparts. For reproductive performance, we were particularly interested in the highlight of the study which was the fact that we did successfully induce lactational estrus in 75% of the primiparous sows and all 20 of the multiparous sows. And what gives this additional credibility was the fact that we achieved a, a high pregnancy rate similar to the control sows and matching that which might be experienced in high producing U.S. sow herds. To visualize the day when, when sows were detected in estrus, you can see the alt sows depicted in blue and controls in yellow. Along the vertical axis, we have the number of sows in estrus, and along the horizontal axis, the day in estrus post farrowing. As you can see, there is a treatment effect where alt sows were in estrus earlier on average as compared to control sows, shifting their estrus behavior up about a day and a half relative to the controls. A different visualization of the same data would be showing here the cumulative percentage of sows in estrus with the percentage of sows in estrus along the vertical axis. As you can see, alt sows reached 90 percentile earlier, as would be depicted here by tw day 24, where over 90% of the alt sows were in heat, whereas less than 50% of the control sows had expressed estrus at that point. Looking at the ultrasound measurements of this study, on this, on this slide, we again have alts depicted in blue and controls depicted in yellow. With follicular diameter along the vertical axis, 
which is expressed as the average diameter of the three largest follicles on each ovary at each daily scan. The daily scans are represented along the, the horizontal axis as the day after farrowing. This generally matches the estrus behavior slide just previ was previously shown. As you can see, the alt sows reached maximum follicular diameter about a day earlier than controls, shifting their follicular growth profile earlier in lactation. When we overlay this, with the serum estradiol collections, you can see via the bar graph imposed over top at day 18, day 21, and day 25 when blood was collected, you can see that the alt sows, once again depicted in blue, had their, their serum estradiol profile shifted earlier in lactation, reaching a peak around day 21, whereas control sows peaked later. But again, the serum estradiol levels show that both of these treatments showed a normal follicular growth pattern uh, which is important because some previous studies where estrus, lactational estrus was attempted to be stimulated earlier in lactation had generated cystic sows and abnormal follicular development. So, for the summary of this study, the ALT treatment did not significantly affect litter growth performance during lactation, but I would direct your attention to a secondary abstract by a colleague of mine, by K.M. Gorley, which breaks down the performance of the piglets as they move into the nursery as well. The alt treatment did elicit estrus in during lactation in 26 of the 28 alt sows, and the pregnancy rates were similar to control sows mated after weaning. And compared to the controls, alt sows exhibited estrus earlier post-farrowing, approximately a day earlier at day 23, as compared to 24.6 for controls. The subsequent farrowing rate and litter characteristics of the 40 sows which were able to be obtained were similar between control and alt sows, and once again, we were encouraged by the fact that the ovarian hormone levels and ultrasound measurements suggest that follicular growth patterns were similar across treatments and displayed normal follicular growth. So, for the implications of this study, while we recognize that additional research needs to be done and confirm this in larger populations of sows, our data indicates that this novel alt suckling treatment can successfully induce lactational estrus at high rates which are comparable to those seen in high producing U.S. sow herds after conventional weaning. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this presentation.